All right, what's up everybody? Kevin Benny back again. Been a few weeks since I've been in front of the camera talking about saxophone stuff, music stuff. So I thought I'd get on that uh, for this week. So this week we're gonna be talking about my jazz setup, kind of like how it works all together. I've done a ton of videos just on specific equipment, my mouthpiece, my neck, my ligature. Um, but I've been getting comments, people have been asking me kind of like specifically my jazz setup, you know, what do I like about it? Why do I use the things I use? So this is gonna be that video, I'm gonna talk about that. I gotta say thank you to my subscribers and everyone that's commenting on my videos, just throwing the support out there. I truly appreciate it dearly. Um, especially the comments that are asking me questions. You know, the more questions I get on a specific topic, I'm gonna put a video out there just like I'm doing with this video. And I gotta say, I'm starting to see some exponential growth with my channel and I got no one to thank but all of my subscribers that are, you know, hitting that sub button. So thank you so much everybody. Now I'll talk about my equipment here. All right, so we're gonna start with the mouthpiece, which is always a good place to start. Probably the most asked about piece of equipment when it comes to saxophone. So there is a piece of hair on my mouthpiece. Probably cat hair, as usual. Okay, anyway, so this mouthpiece is a Berg Larsen hard rubber mouthpiece. The tip opening is 120, and the chamber is a size one chamber. So it's a 120, over one Berg Larsen mouthpiece. Now the facing length, which is a very small detail that I don't really pay attention to because I find that like in the Berg Larsen, Berg Larsen mouthpieces, the facing length doesn't do much. This is an M facing length. Uh, they have two facings. It's a, there's an SMS, which is their shorter facing, and their M, which is their medium facing they're longer facing. Yeah, so I don't really pay much attention to those things. I'm more about the tip opening and the chamber size. Okay, so the reason why I play on Berg Larsen mouthpieces is because they have a small chamber and they have a baffle, okay? So there's tons of mouthpieces that have baffles, but most of them have a large chamber. And I can understand why they do that because, you know, with a baffle, you can kind of get a little bit too much of an edgy sound. So the larger chamber can kind of like open up some of the darker sounds on the instrument. But let me show you the inside of the mouthpiece, if it shows up on my camera here. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, all right, this'll work. So yeah, it's a horseshoe shape, and it's pr it's a small chamber. Um, let's see, actually I have, ah, I do. I have a V6, no, this is a Java mouthpiece. This also has a pretty high baffle, but if you look inside, the chamber, is a lot bigger. Might be able to go this way. Yeah, you see how big that chamber is? It's like really a circle. Big circle. Okay. This one, it's way smaller. Maybe I can go this way. It's kind of hard to see, but this one is way bigger. My Berg Larsen has a small chamber and it also has a baffle. Okay, the baffle gives a, that brighter sound. And what I like about that is that I can use a Focus airstream. I mean, smaller chambers, you could really use a nice focus airstream. With a larger chamber, you're using a much wider airstream. I don't really like that. Some people do, but that's just my preference. Um, and that's the biggest reason why I use Berg Larsen's. There's really not many mouthpieces out there that have a semi-high baffle with a small chamber. And I mean, the Berg Larsen's still get a pretty full sound, even though they have a, a small chamber and a, a high baffle. So that's that. So th there's three chambers with the Berg Larsen. There's a, 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 what is it? Or is it four chambers? I think it's four. A three, a two, a one, and a zero. Zero being the brightest and then four or three being the darkest. The one is perfect for me uh, because I do like a, a quite a lot of edge in the sound, um, a lot of color, but the zero was just like way too bright. Like I couldn't tame it for acoustic settings. Um, so the one is a perfect, perfect size for me. If you're playing more like, I guess like traditional jazz, definitely the, the two and the three are more suited for that. But you could definitely play traditional jazz with a one. I mean, you can play anything on any mouthpiece, but that's just my opinion. Okay, so the next thing is the tip opening, the 120 tip opening. Tip opening. Now that's extremely, that's a big tip opening, but Berg Larsen mouthpieces, they are, they blow pretty easily. So my 120, it doesn't really feel that, that open, but you do get like that depth of sound that the large tip opening gives you. But yeah, I, I just stopped on the 120 because as I've played through the years, I wanted like a just a more open mouthpiece, more open mouthpiece, and I haven't 
craved anything more open than this one. This is kind of, it's almost, it does feel a little too open sometimes, but I, I kind of work with it and I do experiment with smaller tip openings from time to time. So I'm all over the place, but I always usually stick with the Berg Larsen mouthpiece. Okay, so there's one little added thing here, which is this little ring. Berg Larsen's mouthpieces do not have this ring. Now this is removable, comes off if I can get it. Off. It's it's got to be snug because it'll just fall off when you're playing from the vibrations But this is just it's a stainless steel ring I, I saw someone use one of these, you know And they were telling me about it and you can get these stainless steel rings from Amazon You can get them probably from like Home Depot or any any like or ace hardware or something like that Not sure what they're used for originally, but all I did was I just cut right through it with like wire cutters basically and I just was able to like kind of shape it with pliers to the mouthpiece so it's just a perfect size that it goes in there and it's nice and snug it does mark the mouthpiece up a little bit I'm not one for aesthetic I don't really care what things look like but I mean you can't even tell <laughs> so it doesn't matter anyway that stainless steel I I put it on there because the hard rubber with Berg Larsen mouthpieces to me sounds a little dead sometimes. It, it lacks a bit of uh, richness that some of these other mouthpiece makers have. So the stainless steel slightly puts a little bit of a ring to the top of the, the sound. Uh, this is again, you can't really hear it. It's more of like my own feeling when I'm playing. It also gives a little bit more of a focus to the sound or a little bit more like heavier response in a sense again this is hard to explain but um i just like it it because it just it gives me a certain type of response that i like with it and a certain type of resonance that i can feel when i'm playing okay i think we're good with the mouthpiece that's that's quite a bit of talk on that let's go to the reeds so the reeds i use are regatti reeds i use i mean mainly i've been sticking with the regatti gold jazz reeds okay and i've been playing on the three and a half strong but if you watch some of my other videos i'll put a little card or wherever it's going to be up here i did experiment with a lot stiffer reeds because i liked the, the the altissimo register it was giving me so i experimented with more of these reeds from regatti and a bunch of other reeds from uh Diderio, uh van doren tons of other reeds and i actually happened upon regatti's queen reeds these things are awesome I, I used these quite a long time ago i didn't really like them very much but they definitely give a lot more to the top end without needing to like push so much air through the instrument there's other little details about these that are different that i'll go into specifically with the reeds but for Gotti reeds in general they have a very focused response um an even response the the, the reeds are extremely consistent um and how they pair with my berg larsen in general, the Regatti Cane is extremely rich, um, it's, and it's very clear um, and transparent to me, uh, meaning it gives you a little, it's more on the brighter side of things rather than the darker side of things. So it pairs well with this hard rubber, again. This hard rubber can be a little dead sounding, hence the stainless steel, but the Regatti reeds really bring the character out for this mouthpiece. I will say, I feel like with the large tip opening, I think the, the Regatti Gold actually feel a lot better with this mouthpiece than the Queen Reeds. I may experiment the, with the cream, uh, I may experiment with the Queen Reeds on a smaller tip opening. Again, I've done that many times in my videos. So that's that. So that's really cool. But all Regatti Reeds, man, are, are really awesome. I use the Regatti Classic Reeds as well. I also use Van Doren Reeds, you know, but Lately, I've been sticking with Regatti because they're super consistent and uh, they're giving me the sound and the comfort when I play. Cool. All right, so we're going to the ligature. This is a Marc Jean silver plated ligature. I think it's just silver plated. I don't know if the whole thing is made out of silver. I think it's just silver plated. But these things are amazing. Again, I did a video on this quite a long time ago. I'll put a card right above there. Um, the one thing about these ligatures is that they have this piece of grenadilla wood that comes in good contact with the reed. And that gives an extremely lively, vibrant, rich tone. But what I really like about these ligatures is the response they give me. Super focused response. Again, I'm all about that focus if you watch my videos. From top to bottom. Um, I think they just make the saxophone tone, like if here's the tone, it kind of opens up the sound like a lot from the top to bottom. There's more lows in the sound, there's more highs in the sound with this ligature. And I think it really has to do with that 
Grenadilla wood. I didn't try any of their other finishes, but I would, I'm always on the, I err on the side of bright, brighter sounds and silver plating always gives you that brighter sound in my experience. Okay, cool. So we're moving right along here. This is uh, definitely a saxophonist video because <laughs> you're not going to be sticking around long if you're not into this stuff. It might not even be saxophonist video. It's only like the, the super gearheads like me. Um, cool. So the next thing is my neck here. Okay, my neck. Again, I did a video on the neck. I'll put a card here. Uh, but my neck here, silver plated again. It's silver plated brass. It's a Yamaha V1 neck. These necks are... I love these necks for classical and jazz playing. I mean, really with the Yamaha horns, I think these necks play the most in tune. I think they're the most flexible. They give you the most dynamic range. And they're, it, it's more of not even like a tone thing. It's more of just like precision and just making the horn feel and, 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 and play better, basically. That's why I chose this neck. The silver plating though is for sound and that is color. And that's, I think it gives a little more depth and brightness. Um, to the sound a little bit more the grainy quality that I like in uh, kind of my jazz sound and it gives you more dynamic range uh, silver plating always does that and more to the top end you're able to go higher into the altissimo and just get in, into the altissimo a lot easier yeah so that's basically the neck and then it wraps it up is my my horn oh actually here let me talk about this little thing <laughs> This little screw right here. I don't know if anyone's actually, someone asked me about it once, but it's very hard to notice. But this little screw, I got this thing from Home Depot, okay? My, my last screw that came with the horn bent, just like totally, I smashed it. Luckily, I just smashed the screw. Totally bent, I was able to get it out. And I just kind of looked up the threading size and I went to Home Depot and got this stainless steel, again, stainless steel, stainless steel, uh, screw. Fits perfectly, works perfectly. Um, and I found that I mean, this is super subtle, but it, it gives like a, like a, a kind of a, a more focused response and it gives a little bit more weight to the sound in a sense, like a little bit more low end to the sound is actually coming out. I mean, something about stainless steel does stuff to the instrument. I mean, I don't know if you can make a stainless steel saxophone, but probably, probably wouldn't work. Probably not bendable enough, I think, but I don't know anything about it. Anyway, so, and then my horn is a Yamaha Custom EX. Uh, old version. I got this in like 2004, I think, and I use it for everything, classical and jazz. And my cat is screaming over there. Can't, don't know if you can hear it, but whatever. Okay, I think that wraps it up. That is the, that is the whole kit and caboodle. I'm gonna see if I forgot anything. That's basically it. I mean, really, the biggest thing for me is the mouthpiece having that small chamber and the high baffle, giving me a bright sound, but still letting me use a focus air stream to get clarity in my tone. And then Rigotti reeds, you know, I really love Rigotti reeds. They, they get a response like no other reed, in my opinion. Uh, a nice focus response. What are you doing, Bamboo? All right. All right, I should probably stop and uh, play with my cat or something. <laughs> okay everyone thank you so much for watching this video hopefully you made it to the end if you did you're like definitely a diehard saxophonist so that's pretty sweet be sure to subscribe and please consider signing up for my email list you'll get some free sheet music when you sign up right away and I, I give out free tips and tricks on a weekly basis that go along with my videos but they also sometimes don't just really I think they're cool facts that people seem to enjoy again thank you so much and always stay inspired